can you talk to us a little bit about follicular lymphoma? With the more indolent or low-grade lymphomas, like follicular lymphoma, those are slow growing and um, actually don't even always require treatment. And so that is um, kind of nice to have that option. Say I have someone who's, you know, in their 80s and we kind of incidentally diagnose them with uh, follicular lymphoma, but they don't really have symptoms, it's not really affecting them. That's a person we might never need to treat that lymphoma. And so that's good to not have to put someone like that on, on an aggressive treatment. On the other hand, when people are, are younger than that and they get diagnosed with follicular lymphoma and we bring up the possibility that maybe it doesn't need to be treated right away, um, people have a real hard time sometimes wrapping their head around that idea. Or, you know, okay, you're telling me I have cancer and then in the next sentence you're telling me we're not gonna do anything about it. And I think that um, can be a really hard concept for some people. The reason we don't always treat it is because it, is, it can be so slow moving that even in some cases five years later, the person still hasn't required treatment. Over time, people do get more accustomed to the idea that, that you could um, have a cancer that you don't necessarily have to treat right away. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest challenges for people with follicular lymphoma is understanding this, this idea that it's, that it's a slow growing process that we have um, some flexibility in, in terms of how we might approach. There's some people that we know right away we need to treat because they, they have a lot of symptoms. Uh, it looks, the lymph nodes are very large. It looks like they're gonna start causing some problems with internal organs. So we don't, we don't really mess around there. We just will treat someone like that. What do you recommend to them if, if it looks like it's a slow growing? Uh, you'll see some variability among different um, physicians on, on that point. But what I tend to do is if, if we uh, can agree that we're gonna at least do a trial of watch and wait, then usually I will uh, see them back in about three months and somewhere between three and six months after the initial diagnosis, I will typically get another, um, usually a CT scan to get a feel for how, how, how are these lymph nodes changing? And if they're all increased significantly in a matter of a few months, that's, that's somebody that we're probably gonna need to treat. And other times they really have not changed at all. You know, six months later, 12 months later, two years later, sometimes they even regress somewhat on their own. So, so you can kind of piece together for, for an individual patient that, that it seems that this lymphoma is moving very slowly and that's, that's, that's what we're trying to figure out in those first few months. Is this moving slowly or is this one that we're, we're going to need to treat relatively early, early on? So um, as more time goes by, we can space out those visits. But I usually see follicular lymphoma patients generally at least every, once every six months, even if they're years out from treatment, even if uh, um, we're just doing watch and wait and it's been a couple years, uh, just because eventually has a tendency to flare up and need treatment. It might take several years, but it tends to need treatment at, at some point uh, in most patients. We don't have any studies in follicular lymphoma that, that say that routinely scanning people leads to people living longer. So um, it gives some reassurance that things haven't changed and um, and so these are, lead to some interesting discussions with patients where they'll say, or I'll say, you know, okay, it's been two or three years. This really hasn't changed a whole lot. You've had a few CAT scans. I, I think we should really start backing off on the number of scans. And then the patient will say something like, oh, well, well then how will you know if my cancer is getting worse? And I'll say something like, um, well, we'll check your blood work. And then they'll say, what well, my blood work was fine when I was diagnosed. So, okay. Valid point, but we'll look at the whole constellation of what kind of symptoms are you having? Do we feel any any enlarged lymph nodes when we examine you? What does your blood work look like? And putting all that together, we can have a we generally will have a pretty good idea if if there's been a significant change in the lymphoma. People are used to thinking about cancer in two ways: either I have cancer and I'm in trouble, and we need to get rid of it. 
or B, I don't have cancer and I'm, and I'm good. And, and for some cancers, that way of thinking is probably valid. But for follicular lymphoma, there's this third option where I have cancer, but I'm okay. I'm living with it. I'm and we know from what our members say that anxiety definitely also plays a role throughout their experience with, with having cancer and, and treating it. Is that something that you encounter as well? And we know from what our members say that anxiety definitely also plays a role throughout their experience with, with having cancer and, and treating it. Is that something that you encounter as well? Being monitored and we're going to manage this in the, in the long haul, almost like a chronic condition.